In the first rak'ah, you should recite after Surah Al-Fatiha, the surah beginning with, Say, O you disbelievers. While in the second one, it is recommended to recite the surah beginning with, Say, He is Allah, who is one. It does not matter if you recite other surahs other than what is mentioned. Afterwards, the muhrim is to proceed to the Safa hill to begin another rite called Sa'i, which means going back and forth seven times between the two hills, Safa and Marwa. When you come to the Safa hill, you should recite before climbing it, Indeed, as Safa and Al Marwa are among the symbols of Allah. So whoever makes Hajj to the house or performs Umrah, there is no blame upon him for walking between them. And whoever volunteers good, then indeed Allah is appreciative and knowing. Then climb Safa. On Safa, you face the direction of the Kaaba and say three times, Alhamdulillah, meaning praise be to Allah, and Allahu Akbar, meaning Allah is the greatest. Supplicate to Allah repeatedly and say, There is no God but Allah alone with no partner. Dominion is His and praise is to Him. He gives life and causes death. All good is in His hand, and He has power over everything. There is no God but Allah alone, with no partner. He kept His promise, gave His slave the victory, and routed the confederates alone. The muhrim says this ritual three times. He may supplicate for whatever he wishes. There is no problem if one does not adhere to such invocations or makes short ones. Then the muhrim, male, not the female, descends from Safa and walks towards Marwa at normal paces, supplicating to Allah as much as he can. When he reaches the first green marker pulled down at the wall, he runs up until he reaches the second green marker where he resumes his usual pace until reaching Marwa. My Muslim brother, when you come to Marwa, climb it, then face the direction of the Kaaba, and say what you have said before upon Safa, supplicating for whatever you wish. Afterwards, descend and walk until you reach the first green marker, which was the second when descending from Safa. You run up from this green marker until you reach the other one. Now, Resume your usual pace until you reach Safa. This way, you have made Sa'i twice, and you need now to complete your Sa'i up to seven times with the same manner. For more clarification, going forth from Safa is a time, and going back from Marwa is another one. In case you feel tired or sick during Sa'i, may Allah protect you, you may complete it on a wheelchair. The woman in a state of menstruation or postnatal bleeding is permitted to make sari but not tawaf, as the place of sari is not a part of the sacred mosque. 6. The woman is not permitted also to run up between the two green markers during sari. Finishing sari, the male muhrim, if he is mutamatta, meaning performing tamattu' hajj, is to have his hair equally cut. As far as the woman is concerned, she should take from her hair an amount equal to a fingertip. This way, the mutamatta' will have completed his umrah, Sheikh ibn Arthaymeen, may Allah have mercy on him, says, The person performing hajj or umrah should say the talbiyah repeatedly in umrah, the time of the talbiyah begins when the muhrim enters the state of ihram until he begins tawaf. In hajj, the talbiyah begins from the time of entering the state of ihram until the time of throwing pebbles at Jamratul Aqaba in the morning of the feast day. 
The formula of Talbiya goes as follows. Labaik Allahumma labaik. Labaik la sharika laka labaik. Inna alhamda wa ni'amata laka wal mulk la sharika lak. This means, here I am at your service, O Allah. I am at your service. You have no partner. I am at your service. Praise and blessing belong to you, as well as the dominion. You have no partner. The eighth of Dhul Hijjah. On the eighth day of Dhul Hijjah, the pilgrims proceed to Mina while they are in the state of Ihram, whether they are performing Ifrad, Quran, or Tamattu'a. This is in conformity with the Sunnah of the Prophet. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. It is recommendable to proceed to Mina before the noon prayer, and there the pilgrims are to pray Dhuhr, Asr, Maghrib, Isha, and Fajr, while shortening the four raka'ah prayers, but without combining each two prayers. It is also an act of the Sunnah that the pilgrim spends the night at Mina during the eighth day of Dhul Hijjah. The Day of Arafah On the day of Arafah, the pilgrims proceed in multitudes to Arafah Mount on that memorable day which Allah's Messenger, peace and blessings upon him, described as the best of all days. The pilgrims are to stand on Mount Arafah from sunrise until sunset on that great day. It is an act of the Sunnah that the pilgrim go to Namira, if it is available for him to do that. On that great day, adhere, O oh, you dear pilgrim, to the Talbiyah, remembrance of Allah, asking Him for forgiveness, and saying Takbir and Tahleel. You should also turn to Allah in submission and humility. Then, when the noon time comes, the Imam is to give a sermon in which he is to remind the people of their Lord and their duties towards Him. Then the Imam is to lead the pilgrims in the Dhuhr and Asr prayers, combining both prayers and performing them in the shortening form, as the Prophet, peace and blessings upon him, did. He is not to perform any other prayer before them, between them, or after them. Avoid, O oh, you dear pilgrims, falling into any mistakes that cause you to miss any of your reward during that great day and the memorable standing on Arafah. One of the mistakes committed by some pilgrims is descending outside the precincts of Arafah and staying in their positions outside until sunset. The pilgrim should not have sexual relations with his wife, nor commit sin, nor dispute unjustly. Allah the Almighty says in the Qur'an, There is no sin on you if you seek the bounty of your Lord. Then when you leave Arafah, remember Allah at Al-Mash'ar Al-Haram, and remember Him as He has guided you. And verily, you were before of those who were astray. Then depart from the place whence all the people depart, and ask Allah for His forgiveness. Truly, Allah is oft forgiving, most merciful. At the time of sunset, during the ninth day of Dhul Hijjah, the pilgrims are to move to al Mash'ar Al-Haram at Muzdalifa. And as soon as they reach there, they are to pray the Maghrib and Isha prayers in combination and in the shortened form. They are to spend the night there making talbiyah, dhikr, and rendering thanks to Allah for His bounties and benevolence, as He decreed for them to stand on Arafah Mount. When the pilgrims reach al muzdalifa some of them commit some mistakes that should be demonstrated. They are as follows. 1. Some pilgrims pick the pebbles before performing the prayers of Maghrib and Isha combined and shortened. Performing prayer should take priority. 2. 
Some pilgrims think that the pebbles should be picked from Al-Muzdalifah, which is a common mistake that should be avoided.